In this tutorial, we're going to take this code pen, which is a menu toggle, and turn it using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into an Elementor widget that adds a dynamic menu from your WordPress menu. And you can also add all sorts of settings, for example, for the background color and for the item padding. So let's get started. One of our users sent me this code pen where there's a hamburger menu and you click on it and the hamburger icon turns into an X and you can click on that and it opens and closes a sub menu over here. So I'm going to take you through the steps how I made this using Unlimited Elements, which is a widget creator for Elementor Page Builder. To get started, first of all, I'm going to edit my HTML and CSS and my JavaScript as well. So first of all, what wraps this is a nav tag, an HTML nav tag. And I'm going to add an ID and I'm going to call it toggle menu. Now, everything that I'm doing right now is not saving. So what I need to do to save it, I need to click on the small little fork button here on the bottom. And now this is associated with my code pen user. Of course, you're going to need to create an account if you haven't yet. And now I can continue editing and everything will be saved to my dashboard. Great, so I've added this ID over here. The next part is to change this from CSS less to regular CSS. To do that, I'm going to click the small little arrow over here, and I'm going to change this to view compiled CSS. This will turn it from less CSS to just regular CSS. And you can see there are 100 lines over here. That's not too many. So it's pretty cool. And it's going to be easy to edit this if we need. There aren't too many lines that you can get lost in. Gonna copy the regular compiled CSS since I can't edit it right now. When we're in this mode over here, where it's compiled mode, you can't make edits. So I'm just gonna copy this. And in the settings, I'm going to jump to CSS and in the processor, I'm going to change this to none. Click save and close. And now I'm going to replace all of my CSS with the compiled CSS, which is exactly what I wanted. Next part, what we're going to do is we're going to change this ID into a class because there can be many of these and specifically the user that requested this, he told me that there are probably going to be more than one of these on the page. So I'm changing it from ID to a class. And the only ID we'll have is for the wrapper. And we'll make that a dynamic ID later on. So I've changed it to a class. And now I need to change it everywhere that I have it inside of the CSS over here from a ID to a class, changing that from a hashtag to a dot. Awesome. Let's see if we have more of these. And I think this is the last one. We're going to need to change this in the JavaScript as well. So hashtag to dot. And let's just test this to see that everything's working. Awesome. So it's still working and we didn't mess anything up. Now I'm going to go step by step over the CSS over here and see if there's something unnecessary or if we need to make a change. So right now, this padding and margin is going to be added to the whole page if I put this in my Elementor page. We don't want that and we want it to affect only the elements inside of this ID. So I'm going to copy this and add hashtag. Oh, oops, I didn't copy it. Let's Commander Control Z. Now we'll copy it and paste it over here. 
So this is going to be our selector. Everything that's added to the body is just for this demo, so I'm going to delete that. And now every time that I have a class, I'm going to add a specific selector for only our ID. Let's add this one over here. And you just need to go over all of the classes and make sure you're not going to miss anything. Later on, we might take some of these parts off. But right now, really quickly, want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Almost done. Perfect, so this is looking good. Checking it's still working, seems working. Now another thing that I saw over here is that there's a fixed width to the UL, which is what's opening over here. And I don't want that, so I'm gonna take the width off. And now what happens is that it slides to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add display inline block and I think that will add to the wrapper text align center just because I want to make this responsive and I don't want anything to be a fixed width so th these can collapse if they need to we can also take the width off over here now they don't have any spacing so I'll just make the padding of the items around each item and that makes for that let's go for 20 pixels so it'll be a bit wider awesome looking good overall looking good now the next part is changing these dollar signs into the jquery string now we do this because otherwise this won't work inside of wordpress or inside elementor Awesome, so this is just to avoid some conflicts that we might have. Okay, I think we got it. And I'm going to add this ID selector to my JavaScript as well. Just so if there's more than one of these on the page, they won't conflict with each other. I think it's loaded and we're good to go. Everything is still working means we've done this correctly. Now, I'm going to open my WordPress website. So I've jumped into the plugin Unlimited Elements, and now I want uh, to create a new widget. I'm going to add this in a new category. So I'm gonna create a new category. Awesome. And it should be down here. Going to click Add Widget going to call it toggle menu and I'm going to click add widget over here I'm going to double click on the thumbnail and we're going to first of all just copy the HTML CSS and JavaScript and see that everything is working so HTML copy that and paste it over here CSS copy that paste it over here and JavaScript copy that paste it over here and we're all set to go so HTML CSS JavaScript this is using jQuery so we need to make two adjustments first of all in the JS CSS includes I'm going to include the jQuery library and second of all I need to add a, the um, the line that says if the job the page is loaded then only load the javascript so over here i'm going to click show code examples js code snippets and Joc document ready so we need to paste our javascript inside of here so i'm going to copy that and just paste that inside just to make sure that this is loaded only when the document is ready to test this we can just click preview widget and I'm just going to check that it's working. Awesome, it's working. And we can start making this editable. 
So inside of attributes, the first thing we're going to want to do is add a new attribute that's going to be a menu. And I'm going to call this menu. You can give it a class if you want. I'm going to add that. And inside of the HTML over here, we're going to replace our UL with the menu from the right side that we've just added. This line over here is the menu that we've just added. I'm going to test this inside of pages. And click add new. I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it toggle menu. Edit with Elementor. And once the page is loaded in the widgets pane, we can search for our toggle menu. I'm going to drag that inside. And over here, you can see we have our menu and everything is set to go. So that's about it. Perfect, so everything is working. I'm gonna click publish to save. And the next thing, what I'm going to do to make sure that we can have more than one of these on the page, I'm going to jump back to the editing. And instead of the ID that we've had here, going to change this to a dynamic ID and inside of the CSS we need to replace everywhere that we had that ID to a dynamic ID this will just create a random ID for the widget and that way we can avoid conflicts if there's going to be more than one of these on the page for example if we'll start adding attributes for colors and stuff like that nothing will conflict one with each other continue doing this till you reach the end looking good looking good bear with me Awesome. I'm going to click update to save and jump into the JavaScript, do the same thing. Now we need to test this. So I'm just going to refresh the page over here. And we can just duplicate this and just test that they're not conflicting with one of an, one each other. Awesome. Next step, I'm going to jump back here and inside of general, I'm going to choose an icon for my widget. So just choose a hamburger menu, click update. That looks awesome. Now to finish up this tutorial, I'm just going to add two style attributes because I want you guys to see how this works when uh, we add some style and a style section. So the first one is going to be for the background color. So we want to change the toggle nav background color. So I'm going to copy the selector. I'm going to delete the background color from here. Inside of attributes, I'm going to add a new style for general settings, I'm going to click that style, add attribute, I'm going to add an attribute type color picker, I'm going to call it nav background color, awesome, I'm going to give it default value and paste my CSS selector. Over here, in the selector value, I want to change the background color of the uh, and add the value. So the value actually pastes the string that the user will use inside. So over here, you're just writing regular CSS. This is the selector and this is the CSS. 
you can add just any CSS you want over here. So add attribute, gonna click update to save, and let's test this out. And let's save before I refresh. So we still have two on the page. Refresh. Click on one of these, jump into the style tab, and now you can see that I can determine whatever color that is. So in that exact same technique, you're going to want to go over all the colors and change them. There, we can make all sorts of attributes, but I'm going to finish this video by showing the padding attribute. So let's jump into the item, which is over here, I think, nav item UL. So this is ULLI, LI is the item. Going to delete the padding from here and copy my selector, add an attribute, type padding, I'm gonna call it item padding, and I'm going to add a responsive control, and I'm going to set the default. So the default is going to be 10, let's say 20 pixels, 10 and 20, top, right, bottom, and left, add that. Let's just make sure we've pasted our CSS selector over here and click update. So now let's save, refresh. And I'm going to click to edit, style, padding. And you can play around with the padding. Now, I'm not sure why this is not working. So what I, oh, I think I know why it's not working. Let me show you my mistake. So inside of the HTML or inside of the CSS, over here, we've added an ID for this part. And that's not good. We need to give this also a class. So I'm going to call it toggle menu. And only for this first part, we don't want that to be an ID because that's overriding the padding that we've added. So let's refresh, update, refresh. And I hope that I fixed the problem. Let's check that out. Oh, and you can see now there is padding. So style and unlink over here, or you can link. And you can see that the padding is affecting the items. Awesome. So we fixed that. It was my mistake. You're not going to want to add margin zero with an ID selector to all the elements inside of your uh, widget. But overall, easy process. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments. And I'm going to see you in the next video.